What's up, my comic comrades? Today we return to the Invincible universe to look at Invincible's biggest bad, Thrag. Thrag is the ruler of the Viltrumites and the most powerful of them all. He is the big boss of the comic series, and it's only a matter of time before he shows up in the Invincible animated series on Amazon. And when he does, the crap is going to hit the fan. So with his appearance on the horizon, let's get you up to speed with the character with his role in the Invincible comic series, which will give you a good idea of what the show might do with him, as they've been sticking pretty close to the comics thus far. I will say this history of episode will be different than our normal history of episodes, as Thrag is solely from the Invincible series and doesn't have any other titles and appearances for us to talk about outside of Invincible. So we will just be sticking to his origin, character arc, and power set. Okay, Thrag first appeared in Invincible Returns issue 1 in 2003. He was created by Robert Kirkman and Ryan Otley. And I will say, if you've watched our History of Omni-Man episode, Thrag's origin will sound a bit familiar as they're both from Viltrum. However, his story adds quite a bit to the Viltrumite mythology because Thrag later expands on it while talking to Omni-Man in Invincible issue 102. Okay, so in Invincible issue 11, we learn that Viltrum is a planet with a race of people who live strictly by the creed, only the strongest survive. In short, their leaders decided in order for Viltrum to obtain intergalactic dominance, they had to eliminate the weak from their planet. When the dust settled, their population had been cut nearly in half. But what emerged from the ashes was a fierce, unbeatable warrior race. Once their battle-scarred planet had been repaired, they set their sights outward. It was proposed that Viltrumites bring their new world order to other worlds. The goal was to establish and expand a planetary empire. It was agreed upon unanimously, an empire that Thrag established. After the High Council had approved the idea, the World Conquering Committee was formed. The first part of the initiative was to locate other planets that were in a crucial stage of development. Planets that were far enough along that adding them to the empire would be a worthwhile endeavor. But not so far along that Viltrumites would be unable to overcome their defenses. The second step was to install a global watchtower where they could keep supplies for long-term occupation and monitor the entire planet from orbit. The final step was to send a team of representatives down to the surface to announce their takeover. This team would stay behind on the planet monitoring its activities. Races who cooperated were given access to Viltrum technologies, which could be used to improve their quality of life under their rule. But races who resisted were killed violently. We go on to learn with their expansion, the Viltrumite Empire was a success, so they doubled their efforts. But a Eventually, as the Viltrumite Empire grew, their forces became stretched too thin, trying to maintain it, and their expansion screeched to an abrupt halt, forcing them to think of a more efficient method of world conquering. So rather than coming in large numbers and conquer a planet by force, the highest rank and most trusted officers would be given planets to survey and weaken over time. And this is where Invincible's story would start, as Nolan, aka Omni-Man, being one of their highest ranking officials, was sent to Earth, at which point he would meet Mark's mother, marrying her, to pass the time while he ultimately plotted to conquer Earth. The two would eventually have Mark, aka Invincible, and the rest was history. But that's how the Viltrumites came to be and what they're all about. As for Viltrum's leader, Thrag, he gives us his side of things. Now, in the issue, Thrag is about to kill Omni-Man, as Omni-Man is considered a traitor to his people, as he did not conquer Earth like he was supposed to do, but instead fled and took refuge on a planet of alien mantis humanoids, becoming their leader and marrying one of them and even having a son with her. Point is, he gets caught by the Viltrums and eventually makes a truce, but Thrag ends up attacking him anyway in issue 111. Nolan is like, Thrag, why have you done this? I thought we had a truce. Why attack me at all? There was an agreement. I pose no threat. Thrag replies, no threat? Really? You have no idea, do you? Before you die, you might as well know the truth. Let me tell you where you really came from. And this is where we learn how Thrag became leader of Viltrum and what his mission was. Our homeworld Viltrum was a relative paradise for many millennia. All that came to an abrupt end when Lord Argal was slain by the betrayer Thaddeus. Lord Argal had many heirs, but they were all hidden and anonymous. The Empire had far too many enemies for the whereabouts to be known. In the chaos following Argal's death, the heirs were lost. Efforts were made to locate them, but the population had decided to cull the weak in an effort to find a new ruler. Violence erupted across the planet hundreds of years past. It was a dark period of unrest. Our homeworld Viltrum was a relative paradise for many millennia. All this came to an abrupt end when Lord Argal was slain by the betrayer Thaddeus. We emerged from that period an unbeatable warrior race, led by me. I was made Grand Regent, tasked to find the heir of Argal who could assume the rightful title and station. I spent many years trying to locate you. Then the Scourge virus hit. I assumed the air had been lost to the virus. I led my people through these dark times. I held us together. I've made it possible for our people to survive. I was a better ruler than even Argyll himself. Still, throughout it all, I've kept Argyll's skull by my side, a reminder of how easily I could lose my command. I ceased all attempts to find the air. I felt I'd earned my place as ruler, even if you somehow survived. Can you imagine how disgusted I was to learn that you, who 
sided with the betrayer Thaddeus, who murdered your father, was the rightful ruler of the Viltrum Empire? You, who destroyed our home planet. I learned of this when your son became infected with the Scourge virus. Tests were being run, and his DNA was examined. I had to kill the scientists who discovered the truth, that your bloodline was that of Lord Argos. I could never allow you to take my throne. So in short, we learned that after Viltrum's ruler Argol was killed, Viltrum was not able to locate his heir, which threw the Viltrumites into chaos, killing off the weak in an effort to find a new ruler. After hundreds of years, the Viltrumites emerged from that period as an unbeatable race with Thrag, the most powerful among the race named Grand Regent. But before we take a look at some of Thrag's major story beats, we want to thank today's affiliate partners, Bass Pro and Cabela's. One of the things high on my priority list has been to spend more time outdoors with my kids doing things like hiking and fishing, which is perfect because right now Bass Pro and Cabela's are running their annual spring fishing classic sale with crazy deals. Bass Pro stores are basically Disney World for people who love the outdoors in general. But fishing is just one of those super chill things you could do to unwind and or bond with your family and friends. With that in mind, our friends at Bass Pro and Cabela's seriously hooked us up with some fishing gear. They sent their Bass Pro Johnny Moore Signature Series spinning combo, which is professional class performance gear with a bunch of cool features that I don't fully understand. But what I do understand is that this bad boy looks dope, so hopefully it will compensate for a lack of fishing experience. Although I know enough to know that you need something to hook the fish with, and that is where this Eagle Claw Bass Rigging Kit from Cabela's and their 70-piece lure kit come in. These two kits have more than enough sharp objects and shiny things to catch a lot of fish. And to keep it all organized, we have their Plano Guide Series Tackle Box. So if you're looking to take in some of the great outdoors and take on some freshwater beasts, you gotta swing by Bass Pro and Cabela's online during their Epic Spring Fishing Classic Sale. It's going on now and ends on March 27th, so jump on it. Just use our link in our description to reel in some great prices. You see what I did there? For real? You get it? That's my bad. All right, let's get into some Thrag story beats. So the first time we ever see Thrag is in Invincible Returns issue one, where we see the Viltrumite Conquest returning to Grand Regent Thrag saying, Sire, if you'll just allow me a moment to explain, as he's forced to his knees. Please forgive me, Sire, I bring news of the status on Earth. I have failed you, liege. Thrag says, Conquest, you are an animal, only content with blood on your teeth, barely controllable. An animal is only useful when it obeys its master. I ordered you to bring down the son of Nolan and secure his planet for my arrival. None of these tasks were accomplished, and so I must ask, of what further use could you be to me? As we see Thrag for the very first time, Conquest says, I underestimated the boy. I toyed with him far too long. I gave him time to gain an advantage. I have served you well for many years. Please forgive my carelessness and spare me. I beg you. Thrag says, we have learned of a team sent to Earth to retrieve Nolan's son and bring him into direct conflict with us. I doubt you have time to prevent this, but go catch them on their return and ensure none of them are able to join the fight. Leave none alive. Do not fail me again. So the first time we ever see Thrag, we learn he is a ruthless leader who even conquests one of the most deadly Viltrumite spheres. Now as far as some context for Conquest, in issue 61 of Invincible, which was the aftermath of the Invincible War, Conquest was sent to Earth to give Invincible an ultimatum. Either Invincible would conquer Earth, like his father Nolan was supposed to do, or Conquest would kill him and take over Earth himself. Obviously Invincible isn't down for this, and the two fight it out over the next three issues. Literally issue 62 through 64 is just Invincible and Conquest. Conquest battling it out in the most bloody, epic fashion you can think of. It's ridiculous. It's one of the most brutal fights I've ever seen in comic books. Issue 63 even has us thinking that Conquest killed Adam Eve by punching a hole right through her chest in front of Invincible as he catches her before she hits the ground. In the very next issue, a pissed off and enraged Invincible would punch Conquest so hard it shattered his robotic arm. And of course, Adam Eve did not die and she helped Invincible pull out the win and in issue 64 fried the skin off of Conquest's body before he could kill Invincible. Point is, Conquest failed his mission, and once he healed up, he escaped Cecil's prison and fled back to Thrag, begging for forgiveness, which we just went over. Now, after this, during the Viltrumite War in issue 75, we see Thaddeus, a Viltrumite working towards defending other planets from the Viltrumite's tyrannical rule, teaming up with Invincible, Omni-Man, Alan the Alien, Battle Beast, and more to defeat Thrag and his army. They then make their way to Viltrum, where they're greeted by Thrag and his army, with him saying, to all who make themselves an enemy of the Viltrum Empire, prepare for your deaths. And so a battle ensues with Thaddeus, Invincible, and Omni-Man being able to break off, flying in tandem straight through Viltrum and right out the other side, destroying the planet home of the Viltrumites. Thaddeus says, hear me Viltrumites, it's over. Your planet is gone. You have nowhere else to run. The universe is united against you. There is nothing left but surrender. Thrag in tears says, you brought this upon us all. It is you who set this in motion, carried it out. 
Thaddeus of Viltrum, betrayer. You have taken it all from us. Our heritage, our home, our history, destroyed. The Viltrum Empire will not stand for this. At which point, Thrag, in an uncontrollable rage, blitzes Thaddeus, ripping his head right off his body, killing him. Saying, at long last, Lord Argal, you have been avenged. If I didn't mention it earlier, Thaddeus is the one who killed Lord Argal all those years ago by stabbing him in the head. Then we have Invincible Issue 102, which I went over earlier, where Thrag reveals to us and Omni-Man how he came to power, and that Omni-Man is the son of Lord Lord Argyle, which is why he has to kill Omni-Man because as long as Omni-Man and Invincible live, he is not the rightful ruler of the Viltrumites. And if this got out, the Viltrumites would no longer follow Thrag. So naturally, Thrag is there to kill Omni-Man. As Thrag is beating Omni-Man senseless, he says, it was I who kept our civilization growing. I drove our people further than Argyle ever did. I held us together after the Scourge virus. I earned my command. I deserve to lead. I am what our people need. I don't care what is decreed, what your bloodline earns you. You have earned nothing. All you deserve is death. And as he's about to deliver the final blow, a hand stops his fist as we see it's General Craig with three other Viltrumites. And they heard everything Thrag just said. Thrag tells them, this man was trying to take my throne. This was an assassination attempt. I am your regent, yet you dare assist him to stay my hand, preserve his life? You stand against me? They ask, you found the heir of Argyll? Thrag tells them, and he is weak. Look at him before you. He is not worthy. They then attack Thrag saying, it was never Argyll's strength we followed. It was his wisdom. That you don't understand that that shows how foolish we were to ever follow you, as they beat the crap out of Thrag. But Omni-Man says, let him live. The Viltrumites listen and bow before Omni-Man, their new ruler. But Thrag eventually kills Omni-Man, punching him right through the stomach, but before he dies, he names Mark his successor and the new ruler of the Viltrumites. It all comes to a head in Invincible 140, where Invincible has his boss battle with Thrag in a sun. The two are fighting inside of the sun as their skins are slowly burning off, but in the end, Mark is able to pull out the wind with Alan the Alien assisting him, pulling his body out of the sun before he completely burns up as we see Thrag left there to disintegrate into nothing. But just like that, let's move on to powers and abilities. Thrag is a Superman-like character in that he has all the characteristics someone like Superman would have. He possesses superhuman strength, allowing him to lift weight in excess of 1 million tons. He has superhuman durability. He can withstand insane amounts of damage. He's invulnerable to bullets, energy blasts, and can even survive inside of the sun for short periods of time. He possesses super speed, giving him insane reaction time and reflexes. He could also fly at high velocity, even being able to do so in space. He has an accelerated healing factor, longevity, and is an excellent fighter, having centuries of combat experience. He is definitely someone you would not want to piss off. He's also a fantastic leader, able to keep the Viltrumite Empire in check for centuries. But not only that, he's led them to victory more times than anyone can count, as he's an expert strategist. In the end, he is the most ruthless Viltrumite to ever exist, but everything must come to an end, as he was eventually defeated by Invincible. But that brings us to reading recommendations. It's very simple, as he's only ever appeared in one one series, the Invincible series, so read the entirety of that, as well as its one-shot Invincible Returns. You should also be watching the Invincible animated series on Prime because it's only a matter of time before he makes his debut there. Anyway, let us know what you think of Thrag and who you would want to voice him in the Invincible TV series. Other than that, we'll see you next time when we give you the history of Batman and movies.